Welcome to your steps to permanent weight loss. I'm so glad you took the initiative to obtain this program to improve your life and take the weight off for good. Each one of you has your own story, and because of that, you have different reasons for wanting to take this course. I'm so blessed to have lived a life full of joy and adventure, and though I've struggled through many hardships, as every human does, I truly believe it's my calling to help spread these steps to permanent weight loss and help you take back control of your life. Now you have this program for a reason. Not everyone puts forth the effort to invest in themselves, and for this I commend you. That's huge to me, and I appreciate your desire for personal growth. That's what it's all about anyway, isn't it? If it weren't for growth and progress, we may as well not be here. There's a famous quote from my favorite movie, Braveheart. Every man dies, not every man truly lives. Life is so precious to us, and it's full of so much opportunity. It's truly a roller coaster ride of the body, mind, and soul. Now life, as I'm sure you already know, is going to take you on one heck of a ride, moving you fast and slow, up and down, twisting, turning, all around, and a huge part of the overall experience, well, it's up to you. Remember, you're in the driver's seat of your life, and your actions dictate your direction. The steps to permanent weight loss are broken into 10 steps, running up to eight minutes in length, specifically structured this way to keep your full attention. Scientific research has shown that with more and more stimulus bombarding us daily, it becomes harder for us to keep our attention on a specific task. Specific blog articles will be included in some modules to further hit home the points covered in each step. Lastly, you'll be given a daily growth task, allowing you to put what you've learned into action right away. The best way to succeed is to act, and the best action occurs when you do it now. Okay, let's get to it. I look forward to running with you on this awesome journey on your steps to permanent weight loss. Before we get started, I'd like you to listen closely to what I have to say because I'm giving you a 100% guarantee that you will lose weight. I'm going to show you and prove to you without a shadow of a doubt that you'll take off those extra pounds. If you're overweight, start getting excited. Get excited because your overweight body proves that you can be underweight. Your mind was able to focus itself so precisely that it guided your body to take action on overeating, sleeping in late, and lounging around instead of exercising. Now I'm not trying to be sarcastic. You need to understand what I'm getting at. Your mind is so powerful that it moved your body in a direction to take action in making you who you are today. And those actions through repetition became habits, which are unconscious programs in your mind that signal you to take action without thinking. Now you may not like the current results of your body image, and you may not like some of your habits, but this is solid proof that whatever your mind commands, your body will follow. If you're currently overweight, that means you're living with laser-focused habits set to keep you overweight. This proves that you have the same faculties to set those habits in opposition and begin to lose weight. It has to be. This is natural law. Where there is hot, there must be cold. Where there is an inside, there must be an outside. How ridiculous would it seem to step inside a house and then say, well, there's no outside to this house. It would be unheard of. When something goes up, it must come down. Where there is fat, there must be thin. So get excited, because I'm giving you this 100% guarantee that you'll lose weight once you get this belief set in your mind. So now, let me show you how. Welcome to your first step to permanent weight loss. This step is very important. It forms the foundation for all future steps, and to build a strong foundation, you need to follow a clear and concise plan. This plan can only be followed with focus and commitment. In this step, you're going to learn about the power of focused thought. Simply put, your thoughts create your life, and what you think and focus on, you'll gravitate towards. A lot of times, people focus on what they don't want, 
And by doing this, they unknowingly turn their attention to negativity. Don't get caught in this trap. Science has proven that what you're drawn to, whatever it is you focus on, because of an important system within your brain known as the reticular activating system. Your reticular activating system is a bundle of nerves at your brainstem that filters unnecessary information so that the important information can get through. And it's a good thing you have it. Because without it, your brain would short circuit from the billions and billions of information that you take in on a daily basis. Focusing on the things you want will trigger your reticular activating system to sift through all stimulus from your five senses and bring to your attention only what's important to you at that particular time. It narrows down your search results. It's like typing in a keyword into a Google search engine and getting exactly what you want. Makes sense, doesn't it? What you focus on and how you perceive your reality will determine what you're going to experience. So let's put this into practice. I'm going to time you for 10 seconds. And what I'd like you to do is look around your room or wherever you are and memorize all red objects when I say go. I'm gonna keep count. Ready, set, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop. Do you remember all the red objects? Do you have a good memory? Okay, great. Now tell me, what are all the blue objects in the room? That's a bit harder, isn't it? It's because you weren't focusing on the blue ones, you were focusing on the red ones. Even though your eyes scanned the whole room and saw the blue objects, you weren't focusing on them. You were too busy focusing on what you were told to focus on, the red objects. Did you ever notice how after buying a car, you then see so many more of the same cars in that area? That's the same concept. Well, as you can see, if you focus on one thing, you're not focused on another. The human mind can only focus on one thing at a time. Now, I know you may say, well, I'm a great multitasker. You know, I can listen to music and drive the car at the same time. Well, that's true. You're listening and driving, but you're really only focusing on one thing at a time. If you're a seasoned driver, your driving skills are unconscious and purely habit, giving you the time to focus on the radio. Ever try putting a radio on with a brand new driver behind the wheel? Well, I recommend you don't. That's a surefire way to get in an accident. By making it a point to focus on your goals all the time, you'll without a doubt reach your desired outcome. You know they have a law for this. It's called the law of attraction. So knowing that what you focus on will gravitate towards whatever it is you focus on, do you want to focus on negativity? Of course not. If you keep thinking to yourself that you're fat, your mind is going to keep finding scenarios to prove yourself right. You'll begin eating more. You'll skip that exercise routine. You'll self-sabotage. And you'll do it without even knowing. Even though you don't want it, you'll still get it. Don't focus on pink flamingos. Don't focus on pink flamingos. Don't focus on pink flamingos. What's the first thing that pops into your mind? That's right, pink flamingos. So how do we relate this concept to weight loss? You want to focus your mind on losing weight. Tell yourself that you're thin and healthy through visualization exercises. Know what you want deep inside and know that repetition reaps reward. By taking constant repetitive action on losing weight, you'll lose it. Now a word of caution, there's going to be some lag time in this process because of a big thing called habits. Your habits have been etched into your mind over a lifetime. When you begin to change course or move in a different direction in which you're not accustomed, get ready because you're going to feel uncomfortable. Your habits won't give in so easily. In fact, your body will fight tooth and nail to keep you where you are safe and sound. You, me, and everybody are creatures of habit, and it's in our nature to stick with the known and avoid the unknown. Humans always seek the path of least resistance. It's a natural defense mechanism, going back to the beginning of human existence. I'm talking caveman period here. The primitive parts of your brain, which make up about 60% of your mind, are still very powerful. And it keeps you from expelling too many calories so that you can use them when it counts, such as running from a saber-toothed tiger, in order to you know, continue your lineage through procreation. 
your brain is running on very old programs. And by knowing this, you can now consciously choose to lose weight and go against your unconscious natural urges by stepping back and looking at your life through new eyes. And remember this, if you begin to eat healthy and exercise once or twice, this doesn't mean that you'll automatically change. You need to keep it consistent over time in order to reap the benefits. This is the same as planting a seed. You need to till the soil, water the ground, provide sunlight and pick the weeds to prevent them from choking your seed. You need to do this for months before you form any kind of a plant that bears any kind of a fruit. This is another natural law. So let's put the idea of weight loss in the same context. You need to focus on that idea and keep it strong inside your mind in order for it to grow and reap the benefits. You need to cultivate this new idea in your mind and consistently make choices that support this idea while acting on it over and over. In time, once you've made enough choices and performed enough actions, a result of what you've envisioned will be true. So why do millions of people who attempt to lose weight not lose weight or put it right back on? It's not because of inadequate information, not with Google at your fingertips. It's because of inadequate focus and commitment. Focus is the essence of this course, because if you can focus on something and make it a need, you can do anything. Heck, right now you're interested in losing a few extra pounds? Well, you haven't seen anything yet. Just wait until you're able to change your life, income, your results, your knowledge, anything. By knowing and focusing on what you really want will lead you towards taking more action and achieving those results. Join me in the next step where we dig even deeper on the concept of focus. Welcome back to your steps to permanent weight loss. In this step, you're going to learn how minor changes in life produce massive outcomes over time. So let's get into it and dig even deeper into this concept of focus. By spending just a few minutes a day and focusing on your ideal body, you'll train your brain to make it so. If you were to write down everything you're going to do in order to lose weight and go over that list every morning before you get out of bed and every night before you go to bed, those thoughts and images will get absorbed into your unconscious mind and allow you to attract your weight loss goals. In time, those thoughts and actions you take will become a habit as you focus on these specific ideas and actions, they will become ingrained into your mind, just like the action of changing clothes in the morning. Can you tell me which pant leg you put on first? Most likely you can't unless you think about it. This is because it's a habit. And guess what else focus does for you? It attracts what you want by moving you towards people who have the same thoughts and qualities as that you're seeking. Taking the little steps in a different direction will guide you towards your dreams, forming your new reality. It's the one millimeter shifts in life that add up over time and bring you to a new destination miles away. Imagine an airplane is flying from Los Angeles to New York City and the coordinates are off by just one degree. By the time you reach New York City, you'll be 50 miles from your target destination. That's why airplanes have pilots who continually course correct the autopilot. You can't just put an airplane on autopilot and expect to get to your preferred destination because there are too many factors such as turbulence, storms, headwinds, and downdrafts that'll knock you off the course. This relates to your life in the same way. You can't just live on autopilot and expect to get where you want to go. If you do, you'll naturally go down the path of least resistance and you won't change. You need to make continuous course corrections in order to change. Now this is comforting in a way because it means you don't have to be 100% correct all of the time. And I'd like to argue that you can't be. In order to succeed, you need to fail. It's the yin and the yang of life. Failure and success go hand in hand, and if you never fail, it may just be that you aren't taking enough action to allow yourself to succeed. Babe Ruth was known as the home run king, but the only reason he was the home run king was because he struck out more times than any other baseball player in the game. 
The fact that he acted more and failed more than anyone else is the only reason he was able to make more contact with the ball. So take comfort in this. No one is perfect and you don't need to live up to the expectations of being perfect. You need to understand that change very rarely happens with the snap of a finger. The only time this happens so quickly is if you have a profound emotional event which jolts your body into a state where you have truly had enough. Then, because of this immense sensation, you are able to see yourself without your ego involved and you decide that change must happen. An example of such an event is if you go to the doctor and he takes a few tests, finds out your arteries are clogged and says you either get open heart surgery, lose weight, or die. What's it going to be? Now you certainly don't want to die and if you're mortified with the idea of open heart surgery more than you are about losing weight, then you're going to lose weight. That being said, a great way to make your reason to change even stronger is to add emotion to it. It's time to get passionate and drive that passion with emotion. Take a look at your first daily growth task and start to focus on your weight loss dreams and desires. Imagine your ideal body. Pick a quiet spot, free of distractions, and have an all-out daydreaming bonanza. Picture yourself standing naked in the mirror, thin and beautiful. Picture yourself lying on the beach, proud of the fact that you're slim and secure with your body. As others look by and admire you, you smile with satisfaction. Shift your mind towards knowing that you are fit and that all your future actions from this day on are actions of a fit individual. Welcome back to your next step to permanent weight loss. The only way to change your results is to have a big enough reason why you want to change. Once you have that reason, you need to create a clear vision of your future. If you don't have a clear enough vision of your future, you'll revert back to your old habits because there'll be nothing keeping you focused on your new vision. In this step to weight loss, you're going to refine your dreams and desires. I'd like you to refer to your second daily growth task located below. Throughout this video, I'm going to ask you to fill out your materials so that you can further define your dreams and desires and create a clear vision. Now that you understand the power of focus and you're beginning to train your brain on your ideal body, it's time to narrow it down. Just remember, any dream worth fighting for is going to take effort, perseverance, and hard work. I believe Orrin Woodward said it best when he stated, in order to live the life you've always wanted, you're probably going to have to face some things you've always avoided. You're going to need a strong foundation to hold you up when life storms inevitably twist and turn you with distraction and unknown circumstances. Close your eyes and take some time to think about where you are in life right now. What kind of lifestyle are you living? How much do you weigh? And how do you feel about this? How about your health? Are you as healthy as you need to be? Is there anything you need to improve? Is there anything you need to change? In order to make this work, it has to be a need. If you only want to change something, you'll more than likely not change it because other wants will get in your way. You need to become emotional with your idea of brand new you and build a true need for this change. This is a crucial part in losing weight and keeping it off because we as individuals live most of our lives by our programmed habits. Studies show that at least 90% of every individual thinks the same thoughts today as they did yesterday. That means you're going to end up doing 90% of the same things today as you did yesterday and the same thing tomorrow as you did today. The majority of life you live is through unconscious thought and habit. In order to change, you need to step back and consciously think. Conscious thought is very important because it allows you to break the habit cycle and allow yourself to make new changes in your daily life. So as you think about your lifestyle, it's important to break it down into smaller chunks. Think about your health, your eating habits, your drinking habits, your work life, as well as your social life your finances, your celebrations, your contributions to others. Do you need to spend more time on certain parts of your life and less time on others? 
Now I strongly believe that excess weight is a symptom of dissatisfaction in another part of your life which may have happened a long time ago or is still happening today. By consciously identifying that dissatisfaction, you have the ability to choose to change. Pause this video and write down your responses in your workbook to step one. Welcome back. Now, I'd like you to look at the life measurement section of your workbook in step two and review the eight areas of your life by circling a number from zero to 10, measuring where you believe you are right now. Zero is non-existent and 10 is awesome. If you want to improve this part of your life, then circle that choice. If you're exactly where you want to be in this part of your life, then circle that choice. Do this exercise now. Welcome back once again. Now that you have a more clear idea on what you want to specifically change in your life, it's time to identify what triggers you to eat unhealthy foods. Look at step three and ask yourself, when am I most likely to eat unhealthy? Is it when you are stressed out, depressed, angry, bored? By knowing when you eat this way, you can consciously recognize and change your actions when this feeling occurs. Pause the video and fill this section out now. Now it's time to focus on your positive outlets. Once you know when your triggers occur, you can offset them by focusing immediately on something that you enjoy. You do this by defining your healthy outlets. For this exercise, you need to take some time to truly reflect. Listen quietly to your heart and schedule some quiet dream time. That means there shouldn't be anyone around to distract you, unless you're performing this exercise with your significant other. Turn off your cell phone, put away your computer, and grab a pen, your workbook, and your thoughts. Think about what really thrills you and jot it down. What gets your blood pumping? What do you love to do? What would you love to accomplish? What would you do if you had a 100% guarantee to success? What brings you joy, excitement, and passion? Jot it down as your dreams come to life without limits and without boundaries. Pause this video and do this now. Now that you have a better understanding of what your life looks like, look at step five and write down three goals you want to accomplish. Your first goal will be related to your weight loss and the other two will be of your choice. These goals will be written the SMART way. SMART is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. That means you need to set goals that are more detailed than, I want to lose weight. If you set a goal like that, you'll most likely disregard it in a few days because it's too wishy-washy and it doesn't have enough detail. Also, if you were to weigh yourself and see that you lost a pound from your original weight, you would have already met the goal and your mind will drift away because you don't have a big enough vision to keep it moving forward. The reason you purchased this course was to personally transform your body into a new you, not just be entertained by the idea of weight loss. A better and more sustainable goal will be, I want to lose 20 pounds of fat so that I can fit in my bathing suit three months from now and lie on a beach on my Caribbean vacation. It's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Now notice how I said lose 20 pounds of fat. This isn't water weight or muscle loss I'm talking about. By following the SMART principle and having a big enough reason why you need this to happen, you'll be that more likely to achieve it. So set your three SMART goals now, and I look forward to seeing you in the next step to permanent weight loss. Welcome back to your next step to permanent weight loss. I'm so excited that you have your goals written down and you're ready to rock. Now the fun begins. It's time to jumpstart your dreams with the number one word that will ensure success on your weight loss journey. And that word is action. Taking immediate action is the only way you'll reach your dreams. Now let me tell you the secret to weight loss and how to keep it off forever. Burn more calories than you put in your mouth each day. 
By taking daily action on this simple statement, you're guaranteed to lose weight and keep it off permanently. Easily said and easily forgotten. But you have an advantage. You have the understanding of how to mentally change. You have the mental tools of thinking and focus by your side to turn this statement into habit. Write this statement down where you can see it every day, in multiple places if you need to. I am guaranteed to lose fat and keep it off when I burn more calories than I put in my mouth each day. This doesn't mean you have to starve yourself or go on some extreme water diet that tempts your body to binge eat after finishing. Those are unhealthy and unproductive for most individuals. Instead, just realize that you're guaranteed to lose weight and keep it off for good when you burn more calories than you put in your mouth. Do this daily, stick with it consistently, and in time this will become a habit, just like 90% of your actions you take each and every day. It's time to start acting. The first call to action is to review your goals daily and track your progress. Studies show that people who set goals regularly and who self-monitor them are 2.5 times more likely to attain them. They also develop more accurate plans and are more motivated to follow through. If you don't see a goal and track your progress, you're almost sure to fail. There are just too many distractions in life that'll keep you from them. And as technology increases, distractions get worse. Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, news reports, texting, YouTube, email, ebooks, ecom, enough already. Our society is so saturated with stuff. It's time to focus on the important things in life, like your job, your family, your friends, your social life. Even if you have all the intention in the world towards achieving your weight loss goals, if you don't consistently go back to them and review them with emotion, you're going to get caught up in life and they'll get pushed to the wayside. Old habits will sneak back in, temptation will rekindle, and you'll have to start all over again. So review your goals daily. And when you drive past the fast food chains, when you're offered a treat from your coworkers or family, and when you walk past the junk food aisles in the store, remember those goals. The beginning is the hardest, especially in this day and age. Though many health gurus out there promote a healthy lifestyle, we're still bombarded mostly with society that accepts obesity. TV commercials, negative news, gossip, and drama all lead to high-stress lives, allowing marketers to create an outlet leading people to feeding obesity. When you begin to feel stressed out or uncomfortable, don't suddenly grab a snack or some comfort food. Instead, go to your healthy outlet list and get involved with one of your passionate activities. You see, you need to build enough momentum to carry you along. Take a freight train, for example. Did you know that when a freight train first begins to move, all it takes is a two inch block of wood to stop it dead in its tracks. Once the freight train reaches its full speed potential, it can break through a steel and forced wall and keep moving forward. Take a look at your daily growth task and follow along in order to continue building momentum while breaking through to your weight loss dreams. It's important to journal every day and celebrate your victories. Pat yourself on the back when you do something positive and enjoy it. It's stated that successful people perceive themselves as happier than others, have less stress, and are making more of a difference in life. With this successful attitude, they decide quicker and act bigger with more confidence. Those who are not successful have a more pessimistic view and perceive themselves as depressed, always stressed out, and not worthy of accomplishment. With this mindset, they stay at the same place, have trouble making decisions, and do not act when opportunity presents itself. This is because their minds don't see opportunity like the successful mind does. It's not that successful people are better, they're just thinking at a different brain frequency, or their mental radio is on a different station. This is why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Does your reticular activating system ring a bell? Focus on your accomplishments and you'll slowly notice your actions shift in a manner that fortifies health and beauty, pushing aside lack of energy and weight gain. Next up is your accountability partner. You'll truly benefit from a system where you have others involved in your weight loss goals. Think of someone you can share your goals with, a spouse, a friend, a coach, a relative, a coworker. 
Tell someone who will keep you in check if you are to get distracted from your goals. Meet up or talk on the phone once a week to re re review your progress, setbacks, challenges, etc. Now let's take it a step further. Get yourself an exercise buddy. It's so much easier to exercise with someone else. When you exercise together, you keep each other in check and everyone wins. I'd like you to go to your call to action daily growth task and fill out your wins for the day, your dislikes and how you will change them. Next, write down why you'll stay focused on losing weight. And lastly, write down who will you will contact to be your accountability partner and exercise buddy. I'll see you in the next step to permanent weight loss. Welcome back to your steps to permanent weight loss. In this step, you're going to learn about the importance of healthy eating and healthy drinking. Get into the habit of eating 70% water-based foods and drinking eight eight ounce glasses of water daily in order to create a beneficial chain reaction that will lead you towards successful weight loss. Eating 70% of water-based foods is essential in a strong weight loss program. By improving on your eating habits alone, you'll not only lose weight, but you'll create beneficial chain reactions throughout your body, improving your immune system, energy level, mood, and overall health in your body, mind, and soul. It's important to stay away from boxed foods, junk foods, and sugar. Next time you go shopping, just shop around the perimeter of the supermarket, and you'll avoid most of these unwanted foods. Now you all know this already. I'm not telling you anything new. You need to apply this by following the steps and make it happen. Let me give you some insight on how fat is formed in the first place. Just like your body has an internal temperature of 98.6 degrees, it also has an internal pH temperature of 7.4. If you eat too many acidic foods from processed foods, fatty meats, sugar, and unhealthy fats, your body needs to get rid of it in order to keep your internal pH at 7.4. The only two ways for your body to get rid of anything is to expel it or absorb it. Now you have an efficient urinary and digestive system that does an awesome job at expelling waste from your body. It's just that people can put food in their mouth a lot quicker than their body can expel the waste products. So if your body can't get rid of the acidic waste quick enough, what can it do? Well, it needs to absorb it. Now your body isn't stupid. It's not going to absorb acidic waste in your vital organs right away, but instead it will store the acidic waste in your adipose tissue, aka fat cells. That's right, you'll become fat because your body is protecting your major organs from harm. So this is why the more acidic foods you eat, the more fat you will gain. By eating healthy, you won't have to worry about this because healthy foods have a low pH and your body will not have to overwork itself storing unwanted junk in your fat cells. Since you're eating healthy, your body will utilize these healthy foods more efficiently, keeping you more energetic, allowing you to exercise more, burning off more calories than you put in your mouth in order to what? Lose weight. Now let's talk about water. It's recommended to drink at least eight glasses of eight ounces of water per day when you're not overexerting yourself. That means when you are exercising daily, you'll need to drink a bit more. Don't get confused that water adds weight to your body. Rationing water and thinking you'll lose weight because you're taking in less water is a big no-no. Water is vital to life. Water nourishes every organ in your body. It ensures that those organs do its specific job. That includes increasing your metabolism to burn off more calories and flushing out your system to dispose of acidic waste more quickly, preventing its absorption into fat cells. Drinking appropriate amounts of water is one of the best things you could do to lose weight. That's why it's so recommended to eat 70% of a water-based food diet. For your daily growth task, I'd like you to set up a menu for yourself. Map out a breakfast, lunch, and dinner plan and stick to it. I've included various resources and suggestions to help you with this. Welcome back to the next step to permanent weight loss. 
In this step, you're going to learn about the importance of daily exercise. Now, I'm sure all of you know that daily exercise is important in order to burn more calories than you put in your mouth and thus achieve your weight loss goals. But did you know that exercise also helps in many other ways? Get ready, get set, and get excited for exercise. Exercise is the key to staying strong, focused, and driven. Research shows that by exercising and moving your body, you're better able to create new ideas, flush toxins from your system, and get more motivated to act on your wants and desires. So not only does exercise burn calories, but it also strengthens your mind to stay focused on your goals to lose weight. You see, it boosts your ability to follow through and stay focused on permanent weight loss. The healthiest type of exercise you could perform is aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise, or oxygenated exercise, burns fat instead of muscle. This is a big plus for those of you who perform aerobic exercises daily because with consistent exercise you could train your body to burn fat throughout the day even when you're not exercising. Exercising at a demand of 70% your max heart rate keeps you at an aerobic level and it can be done quite effortlessly. In order to determine your maximum heart rate, you'll need to calculate it with this easy to use formula. 180 minus your age equals your max heart rate. Once you have your maximum heart rate, make sure not to go less than 10 beats below your max heart rate for, while exercising. For example, if you're 40 years old, you want to find your max heart rate by taking 180 minus 40 and get a max heart rate of 140 beats per minute. In order to find your healthy heart rate, you take your max heart rate, which is 140, and minus 10. The reason why you should work out within your healthy heart rate range is because if you work out above that range too much, your body becomes anaerobic or without oxygen, and that anaerobic exercise begins to burn muscle instead of fat. So that being said, your healthy heart rate is between 130 and 140 beats per minute. Now, I know some of you may not want to purchase a heart rate monitor, and though I believe it's a wise investment, I want you to act now, not tomorrow, now. So, if you don't have a heart rate monitor, you can check your own heart rate by checking your pulse or follow the easy to do talk test. When you're exercising, you should be able to have a comfortable conversation with someone without gasping for air. If you don't have anyone to talk to, then periodically talk to yourself that, so that you can gauge how much effort you're exerting. This would be a great opportunity to give yourself some positive, well-focused self-talk. Repeat your goals out loud. Tell yourself you are a healthy, strong, focused individual who is losing weight every day. It's also very important to have a warm-up and cool-down period in order to ramp up your heart rate slowly in the beginning of your session and ramp down your heart rate slowly at the end of your session. Focus on a 10-minute warm-up period, 20 to 40 minutes of exercise, and a 10-minute cool-down period for up to five days a week. Don't forget to stretch after exercise for a few minutes. Stretching includes hamstring stretch, quad stretch, and low back stretches by performing repeated extension and standing or lying. Now we'll review these soon. So what kind of daily aerobic exercise should you do? The kind you enjoy. If you're going to make this a habit, it's important to do this type of exercise every day and enjoy it. Some examples of aerobic exercise include walking, biking, swimming, dancing, elliptical, anything to get your body moving and your heart rate pumping within your healthy heart range. So why is it a better choice to perform aerobic exercise versus anaerobic? When your body functions without oxygen or anaerobically, it starts to break down glycogen from muscle instead of fat. Because of this anaerobic exercise, it actually trains your body to store fat. Now, say you continue exercising anaerobically and your glycogen stores are used up. Will you then start to burn fat? Well, not necessarily. Once glycogen is used up, your body begins to burn blood sugar as energy. When too much blood sugar is burned off, you begin to feel symptoms of anxiety, stress, and depression. This will deter you even further from continuing to exercise in the future because it just doesn't feel good. This, of course, will be detrimental to forming a successful habit of daily exercise. 
Have you ever worked out really hard and felt achy, sore, and outright uncomfortable afterwards? If so, that means you pushed yourself too hard and were burning glycogen and blood sugar instead of fat. Exercising to lose weight is not meant to overstress you to the point of physical and mental pain. It's meant to keep you healthy and allow your body to create a steady, slow burn of fat calories. Healthy exercise will never make you stressed out dreading your next workout session. In fact, healthy exercise will help your body release endorphins which will make you feel better after exercise, giving you that quote-unquote runner's high in order, in order to help you stay motivated, continue exercising in the future. Here are three easy ways to ensure that you continue your daily exercises. First, take advantage of moving. Instead of taking a coffee break at work, take a walk break. Instead of parking close to a store entrance, park further away. Second, create a planned exercise session and schedule it daily. Get yourself into the habit of exercising each day at a specific time that works best for you. And third, make sure you get yourself an exercise buddy. Like I mentioned before, it's so much easier to exercise when you have someone motivating you along the way. Plus, by helping someone else succeed, you'll build successful momentum that will move you forward in a positive direction. So perform exercises daily, and you'll see a great improvement in energy, weight loss, focus, and productivity. Your daily growth task for today is to form an exercise plan. Play around with it, have fun with it. Think about these questions when forming your plan. What exercises do you enjoy? Can you exercise with anyone to make it easier to commit? Do you prefer morning exercise or evening exercise? Don't get caught up with creating the number one exercise plan in the world. Just create a plan that works for you and that gets you moving. Welcome back to your steps to permanent weight loss. Today you're going to learn a vital component to weight loss, which is regularly taken for granted. This vital component is deep breathing. This is one of the easiest things you can do to improve your overall energy, lose weight, and have a more fulfilling life. Now the average person can survive for up to six minutes without oxygen. This demonstrates how crucial oxygen is to our lives and well-being. This abundant element is so important to life that the more effectively you learn to breathe, the more healthy you will become. Deep breathing relaxes your body and your mind, eliminating physical and mental tension by releasing endorphins produced in your central nervous system and pituitary gland. These endogenous opioid neuropeptides and peptide hormones produce feelings of euphoria, well-being, and pain relief. That means you can feel happier, decrease your stress, and decrease your pain all through breathing. There's no coincidence that when you exercise healthy, you optimize your breathing and in turn feel better. And when you feel better, you're less stressed and more focused on better things such as your weight loss goals. Now you won't need to rely on food as much to change your mood because you'll already be feeling satisfied. In addition to a better mindset, deep breathing also massages your organs, allowing them to work more efficiently. While breathing deeply, your diaphragm descends and your abdomen expands, improving your blood circulation throughout your body. Now this improved blood circulation produces an efficient metabolism, improves your immune system, and strengthens your lungs. When your lungs are more efficient in absorbing oxygen into your bloodstream, then your heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump blood throughout your whole body. Now, because your heart is less strained, you'll have the greater energy throughout the day. Can't you see that this is beneficial? And it doesn't stop there. Breathing also improves posture, which decreases muscle aches and muscle pains. You see, weight loss consists of so much more than just eating correctly. When you incorporate healthy breathing into your life, you're improving your overall function of your body, making it a lean, mean fighting machine. So you understand that when you exercise, you're breathing more efficiently and truly creating a healthy breath. 
So I'd like to show you how to perform healthy breathing when you're not exercising so that you have the opportunity to take advantage of this day-long exercise. In order to breathe more efficient, you need to position yourself in a good posture, either sitting or standing with your chest up and out. This places your muscles at an appropriate length. This natural muscle length prevents muscle tightness as well as minimizes daily aches and pain, allowing you to breathe deeper. Did you know that the majority of people breathe shallow and they don't even realize they're doing it? Now shallow breathers only use the narrow top portion of the lung surface for oxygen exchange. Their breath literally stops at the diaphragm. Nancy Z, a Glendale, California based breathing expert created a simple test to determine if you're a shallow breather. Put your palms against your lower abdomen and blow out all the air. Now, take a deep breath. If your abdomen expands when you inhale and the air seems to flow in deeply to the pit of your stomach, you're doing it correctly. If you don't notice your abdomen expanding, that means you're breathing shallow by using your neck and chest muscles. Shallow breathers are likely to take a breath and pull in their stomach, which pushes the diaphragm up, cutting off the air supply. The breathing technique you'll learn today is called vital breathing or power breathing. Now, power breathing involves inhaling through your nose, holding your breath, and exhaling through your mouth in a 1 to 4 to 2 ratio. So for this lesson, you're going to breathe in for 4 seconds, hold your breath for 16 seconds, and exhale for 8 seconds. You'll want to get in a good posture for this. You can do this either sitting or standing. Now, for four seconds, slowly inhale through your nose, filling your lungs with air, and at the same time, allow your belly to stay relaxed and expand fully as air flows freely. Let your breath engage and fill every part of your body, especially your stomach, spine, and chest. Hold your posture and breathe for 16 seconds. As you do this, visualize rich oxygen streaming through your body as your cells are filled with healing energy. Slowly exhale when pursed lips for eight seconds as you visualize your cells releasing waste and emptying out old energy. Remember, a long slow exhalation turns on your relaxation response. So do this power breathing with me now. So let's practice our power breathing now. When I say breathe in, you breathe in through your nose and then hold and then exhale through your mouth. Ready, set, go. Breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and breathe normal. Great job. Now, if you're feeling a little bit dizzy, that's okay, because your brain is not used to getting that much oxygen at a time. The more you practice, the less dizzy you'll get. So your daily growth task for today is to practice power breathing and incorporate it into your day. Be aware of feeling of dizziness, but remember, if you feel dizzy, it's only because your brain is not used to all the extra oxygen being absorbed. Perform your daily growth task taking the time to breathe in for at least five minutes every morning and one minute before starting something you may feel apprehensive about or something you're not motivated to do. Remember this action if you feel you don't want to continue with your daily exercises or eating and drinking habits. Next, teach the vital breathing technique to a friend in order to spread the benefits to others. I look forward to speaking with you on our next Steps to Permanent Weight Loss. Welcome back to your Steps to Permanent Weight Loss. In this step, I'm going to explain to you the power of sleep. Other than breathing and drinking water, sleep is one of the most overrated activities you can do to improve your overall health and function. This is because many people feel that if they sleep less, they'll have more time to perform other activities. Now in a perfect world, that may be true, but in reality, getting less sleep causes energy loss, poor mood, increased chance of sickness, and less overall success in weight loss.
We need to be aware that sleep ties health to our bodies, and with adequate amounts of sleep, we're better able to maintain a better metabolism throughout the day. It's scientifically proven that the best amount of sleep is between 7 and 8 hours per night. With that amount of sleep, you can be assured that you're doing the right thing with your body. Sleep clears metabolic waste from your brain. It also consolidates short-term memories into long-term memories. And it allows you to dream up new ideas for the following day. Those who attempt to cheat sleep only end up cheating themselves, and in doing so become overtired, overstressed, overworked, and overweight. Most of American society has forgotten how to feel truly rested. Think back to a time when you started your day off with a bad night's sleep. It's pretty horrible, isn't it? You have to deal with that constant fogginess in your brain that never goes away. You have to try and maintain a productive attitude when all you want to do is close the door and go to sleep. That's right, a bad night's sleep is a recipe for unfocused and unproductive failure. Believe it or not, lack of sleep is one of the largest risk factors linked with obesity. Studies show that adults are 55% more likely to become obese when they don't get enough sleep, and children are 89% more likely to become obese when they don't get enough sleep. With a good night's sleep, your body is able to improve its appetite control, helping you eat less throughout the day. Improved hormone levels such as decreased cortisol, increased testosterone, and improved insulin sensitivity allows your body to have better hormonal control leading to less stress, anxiety, and depression, as well as a decrease in diabetes. Sleep also improves your overall immune system. Now that you know all the benefits of good sleep, you need to figure out how to sleep better at night. Here are some useful techniques to fall asleep quicker and stay asleep longer. First, use blackout curtains to darken your room. Melatonin, which is a natural sleep hormone produced in your body, is raised at times of rest when it's more dark. Lights will confuse your body into producing less than desired amounts of melatonin, preventing you from falling asleep. This also means turning off any electronic devices at least two hours before bed. Electronic devices such as computers, cell phones, and televisions emit a blue light which restrains the production of melatonin, making it more difficult to fall asleep. Next, have a relaxing bedtime ritual, such as reading a book or listening to relaxing music right before bed. This will help you calm your mind and make it easier to fall asleep. Daily exercise is also known to improve sleep throughout the night, as well as providing a variety of other health benefits described in the previous step. Avoid drinking alcohol, caffeinated drinks, or drinks in general for that matter, as they'll raise your likelihood to need to get up in the middle of the night and use the bathroom. Lastly, keep your room cool. A cool room triggers your brain to go into hibernation mode and makes it easier to fall asleep. All right, sleepers, now that you understand the benefits of a good night's sleep, it's time for your daily growth task. I'd like you to implement at least two techniques towards getting a better night's sleep to your nightly routine. Next, if you're not meeting your required seven to eight hours of sleep per night, increase the amount of sleep you get each night by just 30 minutes a week until you reach your desired sleep time. Focus on going to bed earlier and waking up earlier as mornings are the most productive time of the day. Keep up the great work, and I look forward to speaking with you on your next step to permanent weight loss. Welcome back to your steps to permanent weight loss. In this step, you're going to learn how good posture helps maintain better breathing, better exercise, better sleep, and by how combining these habits you can create body you always wanted. This content will be broken into two steps. In the first step, I'll explain to you the physical benefits of good posture, and in the next step, I'll explain to you the positive mental and emotional effects. So let's get started. Keeping good posture will place your muscles at a proper length, thus supporting and stabilizing your body. This proper alignment of muscles will decrease stress placed on your joints and will prevent joint pain, muscle aches, and injury. 
Remember this, your body is fully connected. Changing the length of one muscle can have an effect on all other muscles. Did you know that if your big toe has limited motion, it could essentially affect your neck? Well, why not? The fact that your big toe is not able to move through its full range of motion while walking will affect the movement of your foot, which then alters the joint motion in your knee, causing your muscles to tighten up. From there, your knee limitations will affect your hip performance. And once that's compromised, a chain reaction of joint limitations will ride up your spine into your neck. Like I said, your body is fully connected. Let's look at poor posture for a moment. If you were to get in a slouched position, you'll notice your chest becomes constricted as your muscles become tight. This muscle tightness or shortening of the muscle fibers will pull on your back muscles, causing them to lengthen or overstretch. This causes disproportionate muscle imbalance, which makes it harder for your muscles to do their job at stabilizing your joints. With the added stress to the head, neck, and back, you're just waiting for an injury to happen. And worse off, when you decide to move around after sitting in a prolonged poor position, your body is off kilter, leaving your muscles unable to support your movements. Constant repetition of poor movement inevitably leads to muscle discomfort. Ever reach for an object and feel a pull in your neck or bend down to pick something up from the floor and all of a sudden feel a surge of back pain? Now it's not because you made some crazy movement or picked up a massive object. It's because your muscles were poorly positioned, leaving them in a weakened state. And when muscles are weak, your body will tweak. First, you're going to want to get up from where you're sitting every 30 minutes to prevent this. Stretch and go for a quick walk. When you sit back down, make sure you keep your feet on the floor flat with your shoulders relaxed, relaxed and your chest out. You can also roll up a towel about one inch thick and place it at the small of your low back. This will maintain the natural curve in your back while preventing any unwanted pain. There are four main exercises that you could perform to improve your posture. I call them the core four. They consist of slouch overcorrect technique, chin tucks, shoulder blade squeezes, and shoulder shrugs. The slouch overcorrect technique was devised from a well-known physiotherapist from New Zealand named Robin McKenzie. Robin came up with a simple way to get into a good posture. Oddly enough, it starts off with you getting into a poor posture. So for this time only, I want you to sit in your chairs and slouch comfortably forward. Now, I want you to exaggerate a good posture. Bring your head up high, your chest up and out, and your shoulder blades back. This should feel slightly uncomfortable. Once you have this posture, hold it for a few seconds and then back off and let the gravity pull you down about 10% until you feel upright and comfortable, but not too tight. This is the posture you should be in. The chin tuck is next. Exercise that is used to prevent and decrease neck discomfort. This exercise is magical in improving your forward head posture. Start by sitting in your good posture and tuck your chin back slowly. Don't tilt your neck up or down, but instead pull your chin back like you would opening a drawer. Let's now move on to the shoulder blade squeezes. You want to squeeze your shoulder blades together as if you were cracking a walnut. This will improve your back strength and offset the pull of gravity, keeping you in a better upright position. Lastly are the shoulder blade shrugs. Start with lifting your shoulders up and back and perform this in a nice fluid motion. By doing this, you'll train your body to hold your shoulders in a less slouched position, thus decreasing joint stress on your neck and upper arms. Do these exercises and you'll notice the aches and pains will slowly fade away. For your daily growth task, I'd like you to be aware of your posture and practice the core four exercises daily. Notice if you become sore while sitting for long periods of time and make necessary adjustments to self-correct. Also, get yourself a towel roll and place it behind the small of your back when you're sitting. This works wonders in decreasing low back pain. I hope you enjoyed this step and I look forward to speaking with you about how posture can affect your emotions and ways of thinking. Welcome to the second part of the power of posture. 
You've learned about the physical importance of good posture and how by keeping a proper posture you can prevent joint discomfort. Now you're going to learn how posture affects your emotional state. By using this knowledge, you can put yourself into a more emotional state to improve your healthy weight loss habits. Let me show you how. Have you ever noticed that when you're happy and feeling good, your posture is better? It just so happens that the way we hold ourselves throughout the day can change the way we feel. Studies show that 55% of communication is through body language, 38% is through tone of voice, and only 7% is through actual spoken words. Just by sitting in a better position, you're allowing your lungs to open up more, which improves your breathing. And you know how important breathing is. This upright posture creates a more energy improvement with your tone of voice and thus adds a more virtuous cycle of better confidence, intonation, and breathing. So it's fair to say that 93% of communication is through body positioning. Believe it or not, some poses you place yourself in changes the hormones in your body. These are called power poses. Some popular power poses, such as standing with your hands on your hips and the Superman pose or Wonder Woman pose while raising your arms high in the air are proven to improve your mood. Studies show that subjects who assume high power positions, as well as spreading out and standing straighter, raise their testosterone levels by 20%. These same poses lower cortisol levels, or stress hormones, by 25%. Testosterone is more prevalent in males, but women produce it too. Testosterone helps improve confidence, and it also is known to improve energy and optimism. Compare that to the submissive pose, or the low posture position, such as slouching, touching your neck, or looking down. Research shows that there's an immediate drop in testosterone, about 15% increase in cortisol levels, once people place themselves in these disempowering poses. So in order to improve your emotions, it's important to have good open posture. Why do you think athletes who win a sporting event are jumping up in the air with their arms wide open? The actions are real. When congenitally blind athletes win a competition, they also expand their bodies with their arms held high, just as athletes do who have sight. At the same token, when the, they lose in competition, they pull themselves inward into a submissive pose. So how could a blind person perform this expression if he or she has never seen before? It's because the expression of pride and shame are innate in every human being, blind or not. You have the opportunity to use your body language to your advantage in order to improve your mood and your emotional state. So remember this, once you set your body up for success, your brain will rise to the occasion. Now it's time for you to get involved. I'd like you to get into a posture that represents depression. Now that you're in that posture, I want you to close your eyes and answer these questions for me. Are you slouched forward or upright? If you were to speak, would your voice be full or shallow? How's your breathing, shallow or full? How are you feeling right now? Now open your eyes, stand up and shake it off. This time I want you to get into a good posture. That's right, bring your shoulders back, bring your chest up and out, head up high and exaggerated. Now put on a big smile. How's your breathing now? How would your voice be, full or shallow? And how do you feel? Now bring your head up even higher, keep that big smile on your face and without changing your posture or your smile, I want you to try as hard as you can to feel sad. It's hard to do, isn't it? That's because movement creates emotion, and when you're in a smiling, tall, and open posture, you'll have that positive energy. It's almost impossible to feel sad. Just look at the word emotion. Take off the first letter of that word, and what do you have? Motion. Emotion stems from the Latin verb to move. The way you move and you position yourself reflects your emotions and mindset. Remember that you can always improve your mood through posture. When you're feeling bored, sad, disinterested, or upset, stand up tall, breathe deep, and smile. Then start moving around and get exercising in order to lose that weight. <laughs> when you can't figure out what to do, move around some more, and this will jumpstart your creativity and emotions, leading you to better thought. 
Your body and mind are so much connected with each other that you can't do one without the other. That being said, your mental state is in your movement. It's in your smile and it's in your body language. Use these postural skills when you feel bored and don't want to continue with your exercise routine or want to eat something that might not be that good for you. Keep using good posture and improve your weight loss. Your daily growth task for today is to power pose for a few minutes throughout the day. In addition, I'd like you to stand up tall and move around when you're feeling tired, bored, or depressed or not wanting to exercise. Keep track of how many times you change your mental state. Use this technique whenever you need to, to change your mood. Also, I want you to practice the core four exercises. This will keep you limber and ready to move and your steps to permanent weight loss.